Hey everyone, this lesson is on sulfa or sulfonamide antibiotics, and in this lesson we're going to talk about what are some of the bacteria that these antibiotics target, how these antibiotics work, and finally, what are some of the side effects of using these antibiotics. So let's get started. Sulfa or sulfonamide antibiotics are the first synthetic antibiotics, and one example is sulfamethoxazole. Sulfamethoxazole itself is typically combined with trimethoprim, and trimethoprim itself is an inhibitor of folic acid synthesis. And when we combine these two, we call it trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, or you might have heard of septra. These antibiotics have good GI absorption and are well distributed, and they can cross a blood-brain barrier um, in small proportions, and they are renally excreted. So trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole can cover gram-positive aerobes like streptococcus pyogenes or group A strep, and you can see here that they are gram-positive cocci in chains. That is what streptococcus is. can also cover pneumococcus and MSSA, and typically the uh, antibiotics like Septra aren't used specifically for targeting MSSA, but they can cover these bacteria. Now, Scepter can also cover gram-negative aerobes like the gram-negative rod, E. coli. It can also cover Enterobacter, Shigella, Seminella, Haemophilus influenza, Muraxella cateralis, Neisseria meningitis. So other ones include Chlamydia and Listeria. And some of the couple important uh, four special populations um, include toxoplasma and pneumocystis coverage. So in patients with AIDS, septra can be used to cover or prophylax against toxoplasma and pneumocystis uh, pneumonia. So that's very important to know as well. So a couple important points to note about sulfa antibiotics are that they have no activity against pseudomonas and they have no activity against anaerobes. So all the bacteria we listed before, except pseudomonas and, and anaerobes. So because we're covering a lot of the gram-negative rods, like E. coli, typically the infections that are treated with septra include UTIs, we talked about this before, pneumocystis pneumonia, particularly in AIDS patients. It can also be used for sinusitis and otitis media because um, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole covers H flu and Muraxella, and also it can cover or treat infections like prostatitis. So what is the mechanism of action of uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole? Well, when we combine these two drugs, they have both bacteriostatic and bactericidal properties. And they both are involved in inhibiting the folate synthesis pathway in bacteria. Sulfonamides, like sulfamethoxazole, act as paraaminobenzoic acid or PABA analogs. And trimethoprim itself inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme in the folate synthesis pathway as well. So where do these all come into play in the bacterial folate synthesis pathway? So in the folate synthesis pathway in bacteria, we have dihydropteroate, diphosphate, being acted on by dihydropteroate synthetase with PABA that then leads to, after a couple of steps, the production of dihydrofolate which then gets acted on by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase to produce tetrahydrofolate. So sulfonamides, like sulfamethoxazole, act on uh, the enzyme dihydropteroate synthetase by acting like a PABA analog. So this enzyme picks up the sulfamethoxazole as if it was PABA, but it doesn't do anything. So it really inhibits this step in the pathway. And the trimethoprim itself inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase step so when we use these two combined, they act in a synergistic way and have increased eff efficacy in inhibiting this pathway. So what are some of the adverse reactions to using these antibiotics? The first one I want to discuss is Stevens-Johnson syndrome. And Stevens-Johnson syndrome is a skin 
reaction causing a blistering and exfoliative process. And it's on a spectrum with toxic epidermal necrolysis or, or TENS. And um, it can be a, a very severe condition. Other common side effects. So Stevens-Johnson syndrome is a rare uh, reaction to sulfa antibiotics, but more common adverse reactions include nausea and vomiting and diarrhea. And another rare reaction is hepatitis. Now, before I end, I want to discuss pregnancy. Now, sulfonamide antibiotics are contraindicated in pregnancy because they act as teratogens. And they can also cause cornicterus in the developing fetus. So we avoid sulfonamide antibiotics in pregnancy. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on sulfonamide antibiotics. If you did find this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And also check out some of my other antibiotic lessons in my infectious disease playlist. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.